Hello and welcome to Indus News live from Islamabad. I am Anim Hamid with the news of this hour. Let's begin with the headlines first. The year says it is very unlikely that the evacuation from Afghanistan will be completed by August 31st deadline. In a briefing, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Skiff said there are high numbers of Americans yet to be evacuated. President Joe Biden is expected to decide on whether to extend the evacuation deadline today. Indian troops have martyred two civilians in occupied Jammu and Kashmir Sopor district. The youths were targeted in a military operation in Perth, Seer area of the district. The occupying troops have killed four Kashmiris in the past 24 hours. Israeli forces have martyred a Palestinian teen in a raid on a refugee camp near the Nevlu city in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Red Crescent said the occupation forces stormed the Balata camp and opened live fire. Earlier in Gaza, Israeli fighter jets launched air raids on Khan Yunis city, violating the May ceasefire with Hamas yet again. Pakistan says the unvaccinated people will not be allowed to use public transport from 15th of October. The country has recorded 91 deaths and over 4,000 infections overnight. Meanwhile, India has registered 354 deaths and more than 25,000 cases in the past 24 hours. Globally, the coronavirus case load has surpassed 212 million, while the death toll is over 4.4 million. Well, these were the top stories. News in detail after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's have the news in detail. The U.S. says it is very unlikely that the evacuation from Afghanistan will be completed by the August 31st deadline. In a briefing, House Intelligence Committee Chairman Adam Skiff said there are high numbers of Americans yet to be evacuated. President Joe Biden is expected to decide on whether to extend the evacuation deadline today. A NATO official said evacuations were being conducted on war footing as foreign forces try to meet the deadline. Meanwhile, G7 leaders are expected to decide on whether or not to officially recognize or sanction the Taliban in a meeting. They will also deliberate upon whether to seek an extension to the evacuation deadline. However, the Taliban say any extension would be a violation of an agreed deal and one of consequences. Meanwhile, State Department spokesperson Ned Price said Washington is discussing future control of Kabul airport with the Taliban. Now for the latest updates, we have with us Sumera Khan, our correspondent. She's updating us from the Kabul International Airport. Now, Sumera, what is the situation at the airport right now? The aircraft I'm standing right now at the moment is it, it hails to Qatar, Qatar's Air Force and it's a cargo plane where we can see that 261 people are being taken out of Afghanistan as they seek refuge and they want to fly out of Afghanistan and they have been declared eligible to fly out of Afghanistan as as and they have been termed refugees, eligible refugees. Uh, commander uh, Commander Airlift uh, and he is the Commander Airlift Qatar, Marshal Al Nasser, he just told us right now we having the capacity of 261 people but apart from this in the, in, in, the, in the whole day, they are going to do more operations and they are going to evacuate 600 more people from Afghanistan. And right now, you can see it's the Kabul, Kabul Airport's military airbase side where we are standing right now. So, the total goes to, with all, these, with all this added number, the total refugees evacuated from Afghanistan goes to 32,000, including the day we are here right now and we are covering it. 
and according to the marshal al nasser uh, as he's the commander airlift qatar he told us that he's they are also supporting uh, the uh, american forces to evacuate through their aircraft as well which is tremendous right now and the, and and the figure goes as historical as we are covering it sumaira khan indus news kabul airport military air base afghanistan You know, those were the latest updates from Kabul, from our correspondent Sumaira Khan in Kabul, updating with the latest situation in Afghanistan. Now, thank you, Sumaira Khan, for the latest updates. Now, moving on, Prime Minister Imran Khan says peace and stability in Afghanistan are vital for Pakistan and the entire region. The Prime Minister said this in a phone call with his Belgian counterpart, Alexander de Croo. Khan underscored the importance of an inclusive political settlement for the stabilization in Kabul. The Belgian Prime Minister appreciated Pakistan's support and facilitation for the evacuation and doers. Meanwhile, Information Minister Fawad Chaudhry said instability in Afghanistan will lead to a refugee influx in Pakistan. In an interview with BBC, he said Islamabad is working closely with regional and international powers for an inclusive Afghan government. Chaudhry noted that India used Afghan territory for funding the banned terrorist organization Tehreek-e Taliban Pakistan. Meanwhile, Indian troops have martyred two civilians in occupied Jammu and Kashmir Sopor districts. The youth were targeted during a military operation in the Peth Seer area of the district. The operation was going on till the last reports came in. The occupying troops have killed four Kashmiris in the past 24 hours. On Monday, the Indian forces martyred two youths in the Srinagar district. Over 400 Kashmiris have been killed since New Delhi's illegal revocation of the valley's special status in August 2019. Now, Israeli forces have martyred a Palestinian teen in a raid on a refugee camp near the Nebli city in the occupied West Bank. The Palestinian Red Crescent said the occupation forces stormed the Balata camp and opened live fire. Witnesses said the intruders also arrested a young Palestinian from the camp, while a teenager was also detained from East Jerusalem. Earlier in Gaza, Israeli fighter jets launched air raids on Khan Yunis city, violating the May ceasefire with Hamas yet again. Now, in a tweet, Israeli army claimed to have struck a military compound and a rocket launch site belonging to Hamas. There were no immediate reports of casualties in the air attacks. Moving on now, the Arab Collision says it has destroyed another explosive-laden drone launched by Houthis towards southern Saudi Arabia. In a statement, the Collision said Yemeni rebels attempted to target Khamis Mushed city. It said Houthis continue to deliberately and systematically target civilian, I beg your pardon, civilian infrastructure. Earlier, the Collision had intercepted another drone launched by the rebels towards the same city. Now, Saudi Arabia and Russia have reached an agreement aimed at developing areas of bilateral military cooperation. Saudi Deputy Defense Minister Khalid bin Salman said he signed the deal with his Russian counterpart. In a tweet, Khalid said he also discussed regional stability and security with the Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu. Shoigu said Russia intends for intensive development of military technical cooperation with Saudi Arabia. This came at the event of the Army 2021 International Military Forum underway in Moscow. Earlier, the Russian defense officials also voiced readiness to produce armaments and military hardware on the UAE's territory. Now, India has recorded 354 deaths from coronavirus and more than 25,000 cases in the past 24 hours. While globally the COVID-19 death toll is over 4.4 million, while the case load has surpassed 212 million. More details about the pandemic in this report. The deadly pandemic keeps troubling the socio-economic fabric of the society while governments move to intensify their inoculation drives.
Canada's British Columbia province is bringing in a vaccine card for residents to get access to a number of activities. In the U.S., the Federal Drug Regulating Authority granted full approval to the Pfizer vaccine, making it the first to secure such validation. However, transparency advocates criticize FDA's decision of not holding a formal advisory committee meeting to discuss Pfizer's application for full approval. Meanwhile, President Joe Biden made a fresh pitch to vaccine skeptics to get the shot to fight the relentless pandemic. As I mentioned before, I've imposed vaccination requirements that will reach millions of Americans. Today, I'm calling on more country, more companies, I should say, in the private sector to step up with vaccine requirements that will reach millions more people. If you're a business leader, a nonprofit leader, a state or local leader who has been waiting for full FDA approval to require vaccinations, I call on you now to do that. Require it. Do what I did last month. Require your employees to get vaccinated or face strict requirements. New Zealand has recorded 41 daily cases, its highest increase since April last year. But authorities said the numbers are not rising exponentially and the majority of the cases are in Auckland. In Southeast Asia, Vietnam deployed soldiers to help enforce a strict lockdown in Ho Chi Minh City to contain the rising infections. In Kenya, hundreds of people from the iconic Maasai community queued up to get vaccinated as the East African nation confronts a severe fourth wave. I will go and tell people, especially my age mates, some of whom are here, this disease adversely affects us old people. I will tell them to come here to Bizel Health Center to get vaccinated. The Asian Development Bank says the pandemic may have pushed as many as 80 million people in the developing Asia continent into extreme poverty last year. In France, health authorities said the number of people hospitalized for COVID-19 is at the highest level in more than two months. Meanwhile, Pakistan has made COVID-19 vaccination mandatory for foreign travellers after 30 years of September. At a press conference, Planning Minister Asad Umar said only fully vaccinated passengers will be allowed in the country after that. He said citizens aged 17 and 18 will be eligible for vaccination from 1st of September. Prime Minister's advisor on health, Faisal Sultan, noted that the process of vaccinating citizens aged 15 and 16 will start soon. Umar also announced that the unvaccinated people will not be allowed to use public transport from 15th of October. In addition, unvaccinated school teachers and staff will also not be permitted to work after the deadline. The country is currently battling the fourth wave of virus and has recorded 91 deaths and over 4,000 infections overnight. More news coming up after a short break. Stay with us. Welcome back now. China says the US, Britain, Australia and others must be held accountable for human rights violations by their military in Afghanistan. The Chinese ambassador was speaking at the UN Human Rights Council hybrid virtual meeting on Afghanistan. He said the US and other countries carried out military interventions in the name of democracy in other sovereign states. Addressing the session, Pakistan's ambassador on behalf of OIC called on the international community to support peace, stability and development in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, UN human rights official Michelle Bachelet said she had received credible reports of civilian casualties by the Taliban. Bachelet urged the UN Human Rights Council to set up a mechanism to closely monitor Taliban actions. Addressing the session, an Afghan envoy called for accountability for Taliban actions and for creation of an inclusive Afghan government. Ambassador Nasir Ahmad Andesha said millions of people fear for their lives in the current uncertain and dire situation. Now in Nigeria, six of over a hundred students kidnapped from an Islamic school in the north central state of Niger have died. The principal of the school said the kidnappers called to inform that children have died from some illness. The abductors have demanded a ransom to release the 136 students kidnapped in May after an armed gang attacked the school. However, Nigeria's regional as well as federal authorities refused to pay the ransom. On Sunday, kidnappers freed 15 university students in Kaduna State after their parents paid ransom. 
Criminal gangs have kidnapped more than a thousand students in a series of raids on boarding schools in northern Nigeria since December. Moving on, our Tunisian President Kay Saeed has extended the suspension of parliament until further notice. In a statement, the presidency said Saeed also extended the suspension of the immunity of members of parliament. It added the president will give a speech to the nation in the coming days without giving more details. Saeed dismissed the parliament and assumed the executive authority on July 25th for a month. He has said his intervention was needed to save the country from collapse, but opponents brand his move as a coup. Earlier, the head of Tunisia's Ennahda party dismissed Mori's executive committee amid criticism of his handling of the political crisis. The U.S. has sanctioned the Eritrean army chief for allegedly committing human rights abuses in Ethiopia's Tigray region. In a statement, the Treasury Department said it will continue to take action against those involved in serious rights abuse. It called on Eritrea to immediately and permanently withdraw its forces from Ethiopia. The Treasury also urged the parties to the conflict to begin ceasefire negotiations and end human rights abuses. The U.S. accuses Eritrean troops of massacres, looting, rape, torture, executions and purposely shooting civilians. Meanwhile, the Eritrean Foreign Ministry said it rejected Washington's action as utterly baseless and blackmail. In a statement, it said the U.S. must bring the case to an independent adjudication if it has facts to prove its false allegations. Now in the U.S. state of Tennessee, rescue teams are continuing search for dozens of people missing after record downpours and flash flooding. At least 22 people have tied over the weekend after floodwaters wreaked havoc across the state. President Joe Biden has declared a major disaster exists in the state and ordered federal aid. Authorities say 40 people are unaccounted for in the Humphreys County, west of Nashville. They said rescue teams are using dogs to find the people. Meanwhile, residents across the waterlogged northeast began clearing mud after a deluge dropped by a tropical storm Henry. Its remnants threatened further flooding in New England as the system made a slow trek back to the sea. In the U.S. state of California, crews are lighting backfires to deprive the calder of fuel as it rages for a ninth consecutive day. The blaze has burned through 30,000 acres over the weekend alone. This report has more details. As parts of the world receive record downpours, triggering devastating flash flooding. Raging wildfires continue to eat up acreages globally, reinforcing the urgency to tackle climate change. In California, fire crews are creating a perimeter for the advancing Caldo fire. Authorities say the fire has charred 104,000 acres and is only 5% contained so far. Meanwhile, down south in Brazil, firefighters struggled to control a blaze at Jequiri State Park in Sao Paulo. Authorities say three active fires have burned through more than 1,200 hectares. They noted dry weather and high temperatures helped the flame spread. <laughs> Over in Europe, wildfires in southern France have been brought under control but are yet to be extinguished. Some 400 crews are battling the flames which have burned through 8,000 hectares and claimed two lives. In Greece, a new blaze has erupted in a forested area that was devastated by flames last week, prompting evacuations from two villages. Well, now China's Hebei province has kept forging ahead in the development of both rural and urban areas over recent years. President Xi Jinping visited the province and inspected major forest farms in Chengdei, city of the province. Over the years, Hebei has made leaps ahead in socio-economic development, rural revitalization and the modernization of agriculture. It has registered more than 35 billion kilograms of annual food yielding for eight years, while local dairy production has stopped national lists for seven years. In the field of manufacturing, Hebei's Tangshan City, widely known as the cradle of China's modern time industrial field, has also been flourishing. With King Huang Duao port, Tangshan port and Huanghuang port, Hebei, as a vital hub of China's logistic base, is merging into the Belt and Road Initiative. 
It has also become a beacon of global ecological management and the province total installed capacity of wind and solar power has ranked third in the country. The Saihamba forest farm in the province with more than 76,666 hectares of trees was rewarded United Nations Champions of the Earth Award. At the moment, Hebei's Shang Xingkao city has also completed the construction of venues for the Beijing 2022 Olympic and Paralympic Winter Games. Now, European stocks are struggling for direction despite an otherwise positive global sentiment over U.S. FDA's approval of Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Frankfurt's DAX and the pan-European stock 600 have gained marginally. Meanwhile, the CAC 40 in Paris, London's FTSE and Italy's FTSE MIB have edged fractionally lower. Earlier Asian markets gained with Hong Kong's Hang Seng Index jumping almost two and a half percent. Now, still in cricket, a three-match ODI series between Afghanistan and Pakistan has been postponed till next year over logistical challenges. The series was shifted to Pakistan after Sri Lanka announced a 10-day lockdown due to rising COVID-19 cases. But the Afghan Cricket Board said it is not possible to hold the series under Afghanistan's current circumstances. The series is part of the ICC's qualifying league for the 2023 World Cup scheduled in India. In football, West Ham United have thrashed 10 men Leicester City for one to climb to the top of Premier League standings. Mikhail Antonio scored a brace to become their all-time Premier League top scorer. Pablo Fornells and Sed Bernama opened the scoring for the Hammers at London Stadium. They were followed by Antonio, who found the net twice to wrap up an impressive win for David Moyer's side. It is only the second time the Hammers won their opening two fixtures of a Premier League campaign. Earlier, the EPL announced that 16 players and club staff tested positive for coronavirus over the past week. And now let's have a look at how the weather is doing around the world. Well, that is all for now. For the latest updates, you can follow us on social media at Indus.news.